Well, it's interesting, too, how in the beginning I kind of had an assumption of who our uh, fan base would be. And it's not that way at all. I'm really surprised by how many people are uh, not opera singers um, and how many people are, are not even fans of opera. Or the different countries. We've had, like, Tanzania. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy where it is, but it's also just crazy. The emails we get where people are like, I, I, I know nothing about opera. I've never seen an opera, but I'm on, like, season three of your podcast, and it's hilarious. And that's I'm like, right. I'm going. And, and that's, like, one of the biggest things about this yeah. is that the what people who are outside of opera, who ov- haven't already been moved by opera, yeah. they're scared off by the pretentiousness. Yeah, yeah sure, sure, That's sure. the very thing that gets them, like, well, I, you know, I can't go and sound intelligent in front of those people. Well, you don't have to. Well, I don't know how to act. You know, this whole, like, what do I do with my hands? Right, like exactly. Thing. I mean, it, it, hearing, I think hearing somebody talk mm. the way they normally talk whenever they go out to the bar is, di- whenever they go out to the bar is disarming. Yeah, yeah. It's disarming and it allows that door to open sure. so that they can discover this whole thing, which yeah. that's, it, yeah, it is high art, yeah. but it's addressing every single emotion, every single thing that everybody. Yeah experiences every day well and i think people kind of get mixed up in that a lot they, they focus on what's happening on stage but it's like what's on stage is fine for most people most of the time nobody really has a problem with that as far as exposure but it's it's often the the environment yeah th- that people are entering into you know and that's why it's also important for us to create levels of content right mm. the the thing that might break down the door mm. is a meme yeah. a funny meme sure, sure, sure. that isn't necessarily too specific that only voice majors can understand it, yeah. but something that another person can. can. And once they do that, mm. then they listen to the podcast, and then they learn about Tosca, then they learn about Verdi or yeah. Wagner or something like that. It's all like about that. like letting them come in. And I mean, that's kind of one of the things we've also been doing with these uh, mini operas, more or less. You know, is that like new works are all often very serious, based on something very serious, and that's the trend, which is fine. That's great. But just like Hollywood in the world of movies, there is room for like the raunchy comedy, you know, the college Absolutely. flick, the light film. And the mini operas we do are often funny and light. You and know? with language that is immediately accessible as well. Yeah, yeah. We don't clean up the English, both with the words we use, but also we don't do this like singer's diction, like this That's type of stuff. That's important, dude. And when people talk about evolving the art form, it's it's not always necessarily like people tend to talk about like, like, like the art form is going to change. But I think of more like the entire art form grows. Yeah. And there is always room for the most. Mozart and the Verdi and that type of stuff. And you can always do it with the powdered wigs and you right. can always have the gala with the fancy dresses. Like, that's fine. But if the whole art form grows, then you can also have a spectrum that's green screens and, like, microphones and shit like right. that. But you can also have content that is made for Instagram. Sing it. 40 second Sing operas. It. That also gets better. And we've recently started toying with the idea of expanded into these platforms like TikTok, which opera houses don't even know about, you know? Uh, opera houses don't even know about Instagram. <laughs> yeah, they're still way back on Facebook and stuff like that. They have no idea. And opera houses, for their marketing, they're often recording stuff that's meant for the stage and then trying to jam it into a phone. Right, because but they're treating social media as just a free form of publicity yes. instead of creating content for it. Yes, and you that's create different. content for it. And that's that's more or less, uh, I think you would agree with me, what we're trying to do with these mini operas mm-hmm. is they're not meant to be done live. They're not meant to be done by other people. They're meant to be a video that is made with subtitles and viewed on a phone. But that's, you know, like I would love for somebody to try it live. Yeah, so would I. I would love to give it away. I would love someone to remake it. I would love someone yep. to do a better version of it. Absolutely. But it's like why not, why not have it be 30 seconds long? Yeah. You know, opera, one of the things about opera is like when people, and they're right, when they do these outreach for kids and stuff, they always have someone go, they sing for kids, and it's like the sound alone is immediately accessible for people. It's immediately interesting. It doesn't need to be so developed all the time and drawn out. You and I, we we get in trouble a lot for swearing on the podcast. But if the thing is, is like that's a slippery slope. As soon as you start taking that stuff out, then you're going to take the authenticity out of it. That's who we are. And I don't want to be I don't want to be in art or in life somebody that I'm not. Yeah. And that means I don't want to be somebody that I'm not on this podcast. And that's what draws people to opera in general, I think, is when they see something that's raw and honest. We in doing this podcast or filling a hole. And when yeah. I say a hole, I mean like a super massive black hole <laughs> of content yeah. like this. Yeah, sure, sure. Because you listen to most artists in mm. interviews. Yeah, yeah. And it is just, it, it, it is hard to listen to because it's clear mm. that they're presenting a persona. Yeah. And what we're saying to all artists out there is you don't have to. No. 
You don't have to be like anybody else wants you to be. No. I guarantee you there are enough people out there who will like you for you. I'm getting yeah. very Mr. Rogers on it. Man, get they your will, sweater out. They will like you for who you are. Yeah, sure. And you don't have to put on you don't have to put on a facade. No, because people like authenticity. And if you're just true to yourself, they like that. And we might see it better than most people because our, we see our colleagues and we know who they are as people. Right. And then when they get in front of the camera, it's like, who's that? Yeah, who's who that, is that guy? guy? Yeah, and actually when we do the composer podcast or if we do the podcast about operas and mm. then we talk about those composers, that's also a big one. I've gotten a lot of comments about this. Is that yeah. like, oh, yeah, Wagner was kind of a dick. Yeah, Wagner was right. A, yeah, their stories like like uh, their stories are crazy. And you just think of them as these marble busts. On yeah, a yeah, piano. sure, sure. And they're not. But they were flawed. They were they were dirty. They were sleeping around a lot right. of them. It's like, yeah, they, they also were real people and when you even even if you hear people talk about those composers sometimes sure they'll they'll veil it yeah, yeah. they'll they'll put a nice silk sheet over oh like it. wikipedia the the adjectives they throw right. out it's like the the guy was like chasing women all the time like just call it what it was you yeah know what I mean? just and what there's nothing wrong with just saying mm. it like that no nothing wrong at all it's not less intelligent mm. and it's not less cultivated no. it is it is just more to the point, yeah. which I would say is a more effective way of talking about it. Sure, people have more of an emotional reaction to say uh, to hearing he was he was a hound, yeah, yeah. and he was going after people. Yeah. Then, then um, this composer pursued extramarital affairs. Yeah, like, it doesn't hit <laughs> you the same way. Well, it's just not accessible. It's like it's like I've never heard someone talk like that before. Which I don't know what you're doing, but but the thing about it is. Composers, you and I as singers, you and I as podcasters, but also the characters on opera stage, the whole thing about it is it's just real life. It's yes. shared human experiences. And as soon as you talk about somebody cheating on their wife with these big words I've never heard before, it's like, I suddenly don't know what you're talking That's about. That's right. That's exactly right. Even though right. what you're talking about is a completely normal thing. Right. You know? Hey, at the movie theater well, that's again. The funny thing. That's the funny thing is, is uh, in today's world, because <clears throat> it's changed so much with this like crowdfunding and Kickstarter way of like raising money and supporting the arts, is it's new. It's very new. The idea of like if you want to support uh, a cause you believe in, something that you think is good, you can you can directly put the money into the hands of the people doing what you're interested in. Absolutely. You can write them an email and be like, hey, <laughs> like, what are you doing? Take my money. But no. when you throw your money at a at some a huge organization. It's just a drop in the bucket and it's going to sort some kind of bureaucracy. Mm. You know? Yeah, it's yeah. going to it's going to something that doesn't necessarily mean actually if you give five euros or if you give five dollars to the Met, not to not to I mean, if you want to give to the Met, give to the Met. Yeah. But what that money is probably going towards mm. is paying for a plaque that yeah. is used to put the name of a bigger donor on some <laughs> chair. That's what that's yeah. going for. Yeah, no, it's true. I, I think about it all the time. Like, if you really want to support the arts, it's like two euros in the hand of a street musician is going to do more for the arts as a whole than five euros thrown into some giant bucket. Absolutely, because it's you know spontaneous. I mean? Nobody told us to do this. Mm. It's completely spontaneous produ uh, production of the arts, and we are... I mean, we're bleeding for this shit. Yeah, we're bleeding for it. I sure, mean, we sure. take we take our time where we could be doing any basically anything else mm. and gearing it towards the creation of content that people can consume for free. Yeah, whenever somebody then decides, okay, they don't have to do it for free. Mm. We can help them. Yeah, it makes everything possible. Yeah, it sure, makes sure, the sure. world open to mm. possibilities for mm. us. Well, it's also nice. Thanks, guys. If you're looking for a way to sponsor us, we actually have a wide range of ways to do that. Yeah, just head over to our website, and you can uh, support us on Patreon. That gives you access to our secret sponsor podcast. Uh, if you want to make a one-time donation, you can go to Buy Me a Coffee, or, or you can buy some stickers, too, if you want something back for your money. Also, that helps us out greatly. So thanks again for taking the time, thanks, and we hope guys. you check it out.